and welcome to Jesse James Beads. Today I'm coming to you live on Facebook, but hopefully in a little while we'll be up on the blog and on YouTube. How are you today? Give me a little wave to let me know that you are out there and that you can indeed hear me speaking to you. How is your day going today? I know it's early on the West Coast, mid-morning to noon on the East Coast. It is currently 5 p.m. British time. What's new with you? Has life treated you well today? Have you made something that you're super proud of? What does your latest Jesse James bead look, uh, board look like? What have you been creating? Have you subscribed to the uh, monthly magical mystery bead box this month? Let me know what you've been making and creating with beautiful Jesse James beads. I have been playing around with a bunch of projects and I can't wait to share them with you might be working on a little something with Expresso Yourself for next weekend's live. Anyway, I just need to check to see if you are indeed there with me. Let's have a gander. Let's see. Watch the live video. I'm pressing buttons. Hello, says Robin. Hello, says Elena or Iliana, perhaps. Not quite sure if I pronounced that correctly. Can you hear me okay, my darlings? It is my pleasure to be with you here on Facebook right now. But as I say, later on we'll be on the blog and on YouTube. Is everything going okay for you? Can you hear me okay? Just give me a quick wave. Let me know that you are indeed able to hear what I'm saying to you. Whilst we're waiting for a couple of people to join us, Clara says, hi, hello, my darling, how are you? Hello is in from New York. Kim is in from Ohio. Fabulous to have your company. Mavat is helloing us. Hello to you, my darling. Suburban Chicago is Trudy and Netta says hi. How are you my darlings? Have you had a beautiful start to your day? So it's been pretty rainy and miserable here in Blighty today, but we are going to rock with our royal tiara anyway. Eliana says you can hear me. That's fantastic. Thank you. Sandy, hello from Massachusetts and can also hear me cracking let's have a look at what we're going to create today net is in from northern carolina thank you very much gabriella says hello to everyone i'm going to drop you down to the board for a hot second and show you the mix we're going to make cheryl is in from wisconsin hello my lovely how are you today so this is the project that we're going to make it's a beautiful beautiful colorway so it's called swiss chard i've never cooked with chard i don't know what it's like I'm give, going to uh, look forward to giving it a go at some point though. So as ever, I've just taken the lid off and all the beads are trying to escape already. It's a massive mix. Why they're called mini mix, I will never understand. Margaret is in from beautiful, beautiful Edinburgh. Uh, beautiful sunny day in Edinburgh. You've got our sunshine then because we had nothing but rain. A little bit warmer than it was earlier, but uh, we will see. We will see. I was promised a summer. I'm going to tip out the beautiful mini mix known as Swiss Chard from Jesse James Beads into my big angel wing pot. And we're going to look at some of those beads that we get. So as ever, you do get a beautiful amount to work with. And you do get a lovely variety as well. So this is going to be one of our feature pieces today, which is an enamel coloured dragonfly, which I adore. We might also work with a couple of the other ones. There's a pair, there's one of those, and then there's a pair of the slightly smaller ones as well, which we are going to use today. So I'm just going to free those to one side for now. So they're slightly more textured on one side and a little bit flatter on the back, but still very, very beautiful indeed. So you do get a huge variety and amount of those beads. They are beautiful colours, really, really gorgeous. Now this mix, which is called Swiss Chard, is available in the UK and Europe from jessiejamesbeadsuk.com and at our beautiful US site, which is jessiejamesbeads.com. So it's available both sides of the pond, shipping to lots of places around the known universe so i'm just going to pop that up to one side i will be able to, i'll just leave it just where you can see it for a hot minute i'm going to leave those gorgeous beads to one side because we will need those pretty soon hello from minnesota way up north is norma i hope you've had a beautiful start to your day my darling 
let me just give you a quick meet and greet. Hi, I'm Jem. If we haven't met before, I am a jewellery maker of around about 12 years. I started with wire in 2014 and it, I fell in love with it basically. I love making jewellery with wire because you can basically make it do whatever you want it to. This is a tiara based on the Queen Mary Bandau tiara which has been with our current royal family for a little while now. You can give it a hot uh, look on the old interwebs if you want to look at the Queen Mary Bandau. It's a beautiful piece of jewellery. Big, big diamonds. I've gone for Swarovski instead. So, uh, hello from Felicia. Hello, my lovely. How are you today? As I say, if we haven't met before, I'm Jem and I live in the middle of England. Damp, rainy, cold England today, but never mind. Um, let's get a, another look at the thing we're going to make today, which is a bar necklace. I love making bar necklaces because once you get a hang of the main technique, I've just realised that my chair is rocking backwards and forwards. It's a little bit alarming. <laughs> I might set that to um, not do that. There we go. A little bit more stable. Uh, yes, as I say, I'm Gem, I'm from England, and we're going to work with Swiss chard today. It's a beautiful, beautiful collection of colours, beads. I have got metals, I've got crystals, I've got fabrics, I've got what looks like a form of clay, I've got charms, drops, rounds, facets, the most gorgeous metallic components as well. I'm going to show you the blend again. Uh, Barbara is in from Kansas City. Debbie's going to grandson's birthday party, so we'll catch on replay. See you later, sweetheart. Have fun at the grandson's party. Let's pop you back to the other view for a moment. This is what we're going to make together today. So absolutely 100% accessible to people who are new in to wire working or wire wrapping. It is an easily accessible design. We're going to work with just one gauge of wire, which is 18 gauge round. Elaine says, good morning, you look gorgeous. Oh, big hugs and love to you. I don't feel terribly gorgeous today, so I appreciate that hugely. But you know what? Any day can be improved by the whacking on of a tiara. The crown is indeed very pretty. Thank you very much. Kathy's in from Louisiana. Thank you so much for coming and joining me and hanging out today. So we're going to learn a couple of techniques. The main technique on this one is going to be our focal drop, which features a hidden loop down at the bottom into which you can add whichever charm you want. I love this little dragonfly with those uh, gorgeous, I don't know if it's a resin, or an enamel on the front there, really, really pretty colours. The whole thing is a festival of colour. I adore it. Really, really beautiful. We're also going to work on making coils that come out neat and circular and tidy. And then we're going to look at a couple of other basic techniques. Once you get the hang of these basic techniques, you can take this style and create endlessly different designs. So in just a second, we will get cracking on. I just wanted to say it's called Swiss Chard. The colourway is beautiful. It's a mini mix from the Market Fresh group of mini mix pots. And how on earth all of those beads and metallics fit in one of these pots, I will never know. I think they have some kind of magic goblin or elf getting them all to go into the pot. So I'm going to uh, bid you adieu for now. And we are going to head on into the first part, the first technique, which is going to feature whichever selection of beads you want to work with. I'm going to try and replicate what I have just here, which is one of these milky opal by colour. So it's milky opal on one side and then a slightly darker colour on the other side with a little bit of a rainbow. We're going to have one of those. Then we're going to have one of these exotic, almost like a dusky teal colours. Huge bicone for the middle and then repeat in reverse. So that's going to be our first bead pick. Those ones, plus that absolutely stunning, I was going to call it a damselfly then, I think it's a dragonfly. I genuinely don't know the difference. I am not an, an entomologist. I can never remember if it's entomologist or etymologist. I think an etymologist is the one who studies words, entomologist for bugs and the such. So what I'm going to do is just scooch the bar necklace assembly all the way up to the top and hopefully I won't kind of bonk into it too much with the rest of the wire. So I've arranged my bead order and I'm going to have a look at the wire now. To make it easier for you to see on camera, I'm going to work with round copper wire. This is 18 gauge. It is my go-to wire for virtually everything. It's strong enough to be structural 
and smooth and flexible enough to make shapes with. So I'm working with around about 15 inches, which is way too much wire, but that's absolutely fine because I want to have way too much wire because I want to show you how you can add things in and how you can use scraps of wire at the end. So this is around about maybe 15 to 18 inches and probably that's all we'll use for all the different techniques but you can obviously add in smaller scraps if you wish to. So I'm going to slide those beads on before I make this little loop down at the base onto which we're going to add the dragonfly. So I'm going to show you now just smoothing and warming the wire just between thumb and forefinger two or three times makes it so much easier to work with and so much more flexible. What I will do at the end I'm not working with, once I've warmed it, is just turn a small little loop on at the end and that's just to stop our beads from flying off. So we're going to ignore that end for now. Laura's in, hello to you my love. So if the end is very bent, you may not be able to get the beads on, albeit these have got generous drill holes, so I'm not overly worried. Just make sure that that end section is straight. If those beads don't move smoothly, it's probably just a small kink in the wire. So I'm adding the beads on in my chosen bead order, and we're just going to replicate this design to begin with. So allowing those to just get out of the way, we're going to ignore them. You will hear them on the desk. Let me just grab a piece of paper to see if I can get that noise down for you. That should be slightly less noisier now. So what we're going to do is to create a wrapped loop onto which we're going to hang our dragonfly. I'm going to call it a butterfly in a minute. I know I will, and it's definitely not a butterfly. So around about an inch from the end, I'm going to create a bend. So that's around about an inch of wire on the one end. And then I'm going to use my round nose pliers and just rotate those around. You can do that in as many or as few moves as you like to get a circular form that sits on the end of the wire. I'm then going to allow my dragonfly to slide down into that circular form. Now if you struggle to get the loop of your dragonfly through, you can very carefully just open the loop up slightly to give yourself a larger aperture just down here. As it happens, it went on quite nicely and I'm not overly worried. So you don't have to make the loop quite as large as this. You can make it just a little bit smaller because what we want to do is hide that loop away. So I'm just making that a little smaller. I want my loop to hang nicely, but I don't need it to be huge. So I'm then going to support that loop and I'm doing the support across the circular form. I'm not squashing where the wires cross and I'm not squashing where the loop is supporting that dragonfly. Paula is in from Alaska. Hello, my lovely. How is it where you are today? Never been to Alaska. Is it terribly chilly today? We've had it a little bit nippy. Not exactly glorious sunshine just yet from June in England. It's usually lovely in June. So I'm going to take the tail of the wire around that neck a couple of times and I'm going to start off with my fingers. The reason I start off with my fingers is because it gives me an opportunity to see if there is any gaps in those tiny spring-like coils. If there are any gaps, you can close those up a little bit. I'm now going to show you with a second pair of pliers how to just finish that end section off without causing your fingers any damage. Now you may hear some bead noise as I just rotate the design around slightly. What I want to do is to be able to support the round form with one set of pliers. So I'm going to again support across that circular shape, like so, and again I'm not pressing anywhere where the wires cross and I'm not putting any pressure on the loop. You can see we've got a sticky outy bit of wire on the tail there, so what we need to do is to get that tidied away around the core. If you need to, you can draw that slightly closer to the loop by using your pliers as an anchor point. And then what we're going to do is rotate those pliers around very very carefully and what I'm doing is I'm opening and closing those pliers very very gently to just coerce that end section over until all of that end section that inch that we turned from the end is used up rotating around the core making sure that that's neat and tidy and doesn't stick up what we can then do is allow our bead order to slide back into position and then we will need to assess which is going to be the forwards and the forwards of this design is based on whereabouts you've got the coloured side of your damselfly or your dragonfly or whatever it is. So another thing to look out for is the loop is currently sitting 90 degrees opposing my table 
and that's so that the damselfly or dragonfly will sit flat. So we want the loop at the top to be in the same orientation as the one at the bottom because it's going to slide onto a bar a little bit later on. Hello Donna, how are you sweetheart? Hope you've had a beautiful day so far. So what I want to do now is make sure that the beads are sitting down against that coil that we made down at the bottom but I don't want them to be pressed really hard. There needs to be no pressure on these gorgeous crystal beads. When you're working with crystals or with gemstones, you do need to give them just a little bit of respect so that they don't suffer any injuries. So again, the loop is at 90 degrees to the desk. So the loop I'm creating up at the top also needs to be 90 degrees to the desk. So I'm going to pop my pliers across the wire up at the top where I'm going to create a loop in the same orientation as this one. What I want to do is not put any pressure on this bead cascade. So I'm bringing the wire up first to make sure that my loop is going to be created in the correct orientation. Once I flip it sideways, you can see the circular form and that's going to sit in the 90 degrees opposite as we were just looking at it. The reason I'm flipping it over is to show you what it looks like. You need those two loops in the same direction. So what we're going to do now is just hold this in the way that suits our handedness best. I'm going to pop those round nose pliers in again and flick the wire around in a circular form. Now it can be really a very small loop up at the top. I have shown you wrapped loops a number of times now. I do hope that you're not bored of them. Getting them right can be the difference in how your jewellery looks. So I've made a very teeny tiny loop up at the top. It's not terribly flat but we can solve that issue by just closing that over slightly. Now I am going to give it a little bit of work hardening by opening and closing the flat surfaces of my pliers over the loop section. Never where the wire crosses over unless explicitly instructed. So again, those loops in the same orientation, currently flat to the desk, and the dragonfly is opposite to the desk. What I need to do now is draw the tail of wire, and there's loads of wire left to use. I like to, if possible, just have one length of wire to work with, just because it's easier for me to show you how to handle longer lengths of wire. Sandra Blomqvist is in from, new, from Jersey. Is that New Jersey? Is that the same place? Good afternoon to you, my lovely. I hope you're having a beautiful day also. So the reason I've made a smaller loop up at the top is that it's going to go on a bar, and I want these two large beads either side, or whatever bead order you choose, to sit snugly against it. It doesn't need to be a massive loop. If you end up making a big loop, it doesn't really matter just as we go. Well, I hope New Jersey's treating you well today, my sweet. So we've got the long tail of wire coming over the top for the time being. So what I'm going to do is wrap that around a couple of times, making sure I'm not putting any pressure on that cascade of our chosen bead order. I'm going to bring that over the front and just pop that down for a hot second. So my two loops are again in their final position, which is 90 degrees opposing to the desk. Good, glad you're having a lovely day, sweetheart. And we've got the wire coming across in one direction, going out to the side. So on my silver colour piece, now this demonstration piece is made in medium temper, round 18 gauge silver plated copper wire. So that will work exactly the same as the Beadalon German style, that's a medium temper. The reason I work in raw copper to show you the techniques is because it shows up on the camera ever so slightly more. Uh, it, it's just easier for people to see than the silver. The silver tends to get lost, even if I work on a blue cloth. So what you can see is because I've put a little bit of hardening into this design by rotating around the core wire, that hardness has travelled along the wire here. So this is a, just a little bit... It's not as smooth as it could be, is it? So we're going to give that a nice smooth through a couple of times. What I tend to do is I put a little bit of pressure with my thumb. My thumbs are still reasonably strong. It's my fingers and my wrists that I struggle with. So I'm putting a little bit of pressure and heat through there. And you'll see within a couple of movements that that wire is ready to work for you. It's smoother. It's brighter and shinier. What we're going to do is bring a lovely smooth arc. Now my wire has come over the top to the right. If your wire somehow has ended up underneath or to the left, it doesn't matter one jot. I'm going to take the wire from the top of the core, at the top of the design, all the way around to the side and over the top down at the bottom of my bead stack. If you want to go from top to underneath 
or if you want to go from top to top or if you're coming from underneath doesn't matter one jot just make it look pretty to your eye so I'm going to smooth this around and little by little I'm going to create a curvature that pleases me. It doesn't have to be a massively wide piece. It could be just a nice short arc. It could be wider. It's entirely up to you. And one thing I did consider doing was taking a couple of the smaller beads, like these beautiful blue ones, and adding them onto this segment. But I decided instead that I wanted to use them in other pieces. But when you're customising this design and making it your very own, you do have that as an option. So what I'm going to do now is take this section of wire that's crossing just loosely over the front at the moment and I'm going to double wrap down at the base here where we very began this design, where we added our dragonfly in. So I'm going to pinch the assembly together, making sure I'm happy with that shape. Now there is a little bit of movement here. If you suddenly decide that there's a bit of a kink up at the top, you can come in from underneath and give that a bit of a squish if you need to. So don't overly worry if there's a little bit of a kink or a mark that you then want to later add to, you can give that a bit of a hot edit. So I'm going to pinch everything together and then this tail is going to double wrap over that first wrap section that we made together. So I'm happy with where that's sitting, I'm happy that I'm not putting any pressure on the glass crystals. I'm going to draw that wire all the way around. Now you'll see, because I gave that a lovely warm through, how fluid and easily that wraps around the double core. Now to make this a secret floating connection, we're going to again, a little bit of heat and warmth, a little bit of heat and warmth, all the time adding to the flexibility. And I'm going to trim this to about one and a half inches. Now the reason that's a little bit longer than the usual amount I leave for a coil is that I want to hide the connector down at the bottom so it looks like your dragonfly is just suspended. So a little bit of a heat and warm. I have tried to tighten up these screws on my overhead camera holder so it doesn't wibble and wobble around. What I'm going to do now is bring my pliers to the very end of that end of the wire and start rotating in very small movements to get that coil going. Once I've got the first loop shape in position, I will switch to any flat facing pliers and I'm going to push that loop into the wire as it travels up towards the dragonfly piece. So when you're making coils, and we will just cover over this again very, very quickly later when we make this section, take your time. You don't have to do great big swathes in one go. I tend to move my pliers in small movements and what you'll also notice is that I'm using both hands like so, so that I don't get fatigued on one wrist more than the other. So I will move both the hand holding the assembly and the hand holding the pliers until I get a really lovely large coil that's down at the base of the design. Now that needs to centralise over the core, so you might need to take that just a little bit further. And then what I'm going to do is flap that forwards over the connector. So if I pop that down on the table, your dragonfly, when you're wearing the piece, is just hovering. And you can indeed move that coil around just a little bit if you need to. But if I pop that down on my hand for now, the dragonfly is magically suspended and also quite mobile, which I think is delightful. And in wear, it just kind of wobbles around a little bit. That's definitely not a word. Cindy is in from Texas. Hello to you, sweetheart. Thank you for joining us today on the live. So that is our main segment done and done. So I'm going to pop that up just here for the moment. I hope you've enjoyed the first piece. And I will show you very quickly how you can add in some different designs onto your bar necklaces. So let's choose some beads for the next section. Should we make one of these? I think so. So what for this one, we have got a rhinestone wheel or tyre spacer. We've got a couple of these very, very cool. It feels like a clay of some description. I couldn't sh be sure of that, but it feels like a polymer clay of some description. And then in the centre, I went for one of the faceted round greens. Now these are almost a golf ball facet, they're absolutely delightful, almost but not quite. And then we've gone for another one of those rhinestone encrusted spacer wheels. Now instead of a wrapped loop for this one, because these little dragonflies weigh almost nothing. Where can you purchase the beads, says Charlene? In the video description link, you will find links to purchase this mix, which is the 
Mini Mix from the Market Fresh Collection in Swiss Chard. That's the general colour collection. If you check back on the video link, I have popped a link in to buy that in the US site, which ships many places around. And then also the UK site, which ships both to the UK and into most places in Europe. So at the end of the video today, I will drop those in again, just into the comments in reply to your question, Charlene. So hopefully that will be acceptable for you. So do you remember we had a great big long length of wire, it was about 15 to 18 inches in length. We've still got a good 6 inches to work with here. So what I'm going to do is just first of all unloop that end section that we looped up. Now because I warmed this wire first, it's actually perfectly possible to reuse every last section. It's still perfectly usable very very handy way to just stop your beads falling off the end. You could of course use one of our beautiful bead springy thingies. It doesn't work quite as well on wire as it does on beading thread. So what I want to do now is to create a very teeny tiny loop which will act as an open and closable loop which is what I've used down at the bottom of this bead stack. When I'm adding a very small charm like these ones, I mean they're not teeny tiny, they're still gosh, I don't know what it is in inches, a third of an inch across wingtip to wingtip. What I'm going to do is to rotate those pliers all the way around to generate a small loop. And what I will do is stop when the end meets the, the rest of the wire. The rest of the wire. So I'm going to pop my pliers up inside that loop and flap it out to the side. So you've got a circular form on the end, but it is not a wrapped loop. It's just like an eye pin. So Jesse James Beads and the beautiful Swiss chard is the mix we're working with today. And what I'm doing here is just straightening and strengthening the rest of that post of the wire. So the reason for this I'm able to use an open and closable loop at this stage rather than a wrapped loop is because the charm on the end is quite light. So this opens and closes exactly the same way as you would open and close a jump ring. So I'm going to bring the end up and pop in one of those beautiful little dragonflies. Now that just fits in the teeny tiny loop I've made. So I just need to close that up again like a jump ring. So from the side back to the centre. Once that is closed up I'm just going to give it a squish to make sure it's nice and strong. And again you can use any bead order that you want. What I will do is make sure that this post is straight before I pop my bead order into position. So we're going to go for one of those rhinestone encrusted spacers and then one of these fun, I think it's a polymer clay, could be wrong, and then one of the round, the green on this is absolutely glorious, absolutely beautiful mix. And then we're going for a second polymer, I think, bead. And then we will top that off with one of the other rhinestone spacers. So again, the loop at the top needs to be exactly the same orientation. So you can see your dragonfly is hanging like this, so that you know the loop is opposite to the table, because the dragonfly is flat to the table. So what we're going to do here is create another open and closable loop. Polymer clay is incredibly light to work with as a bead. So if I turn this around into my dominant hand and hold the assembly in the correct orientation for the desk, I'm going to use my pliers just to push those beads down and then draw the wire up towards me. And then I'm going to turn again the assembly sideways, so all we need to do here is to make a small loop. Now there are two ways we can do this. What I did at the other end was to create the loop first, and then create the straight line coming off it. What I'm going to do at this end is to trim the wire really short. So this is, let's just get the ruler, three-eighths of an inch in length. And I'm going to roll that around to create an open and closable loop. So you can do that in two moves to make a really nice loop shape up at the top. And again, I'm going to give that a very hearty squish. And I'm opening and closing the pliers over that loop to get that nice and solid. So when that sits on the bar assembly later, I know that that's going to stay strong. And if it does catch, it's very unlikely to come undone. 
it would need quite a lot of pressure. So I'm going to show you these last two sections here and then show you how to finish off one end of the bar assembly itself. Becky is in. Hello to you, sweetheart. I hope you're having a beautiful day. So let's look at creating a small coil down at the bottom of a bar assembly. So what we're going to do is start at the end of the wire, rotate that around until we get the first loop shape. Now that has lifted slightly so you can see, hopefully, that the wire is just higher than the rest of the loop. So I'm going to give that a squish to make that flat. Everything is now 2D once again. So it's quite a large gap in the middle. You can make that smaller if you want to. I'm going to show you it the other way that you can create a coil, which is to control it if you don't feel like pushing, if you don't feel comfortable pushing that into your thumb, this is another way. But again, you'll notice I'm using a rotation in both hands, both wrists, so that I'm sharing any pressures on my body. So once I've got two rotations in the wire from that central section, I'm going to bring that tail of wire up straight. So if you have fine taper tip pliers, grab hold of that wire and then move the coil move the coil until it sits centrally down at the bottom of that piece of wire. So we're going to then add on some beads, whatever bead order you fancy. I like to see symmetry in these. You don't have to have it symmetrical. You can do exactly what you want and that's the way I love to teach jewellery is to enable people to find techniques that they love, see projects that they enjoy but then also go completely their own way and make totally unique jewellery. So we've made the coil down at the base and we've followed up with whatever bead order you fancy. Up at the top here we're going to add another simple loop or an open and closable loop. So I'm flipping the design sideways so the coil is at 90 degrees now to the desk and I want the loop to be 90 degrees opposite. The reason is I want the loop to sit on the bar up here and I want the coil to be flat to the body in where Jessica is in. Thank you for the huggles, much appreciated. Lovely to have your company. So what I'm going to do now is return to those ever faithful round nose pliers, rotate the wire around. You can do it in two steps if you prefer. So I've got that shepherd's crook shape. Pop those pliers back in, draw the wire across the back. So this is the other way. You can either trim it to approximately three eighths of an inch and then create a loop or you can bring the wire all the way around, turn it to the side where you can actually see the wire crossing at the back, and then trim away at the point that it crosses over. Now it can get a little bit tight in there, so if you need to, you can just lift the wire slightly away from the assembly, bring your pliers back in, your cutting pliers, and just trim that away. That's probably a little bit too small, we'll, we'll hold on to it anyway. And then you need to close that open and closable or simple loop back up. And you'll see again that the coil is 90 degrees opposing to the loop at the top. To ensure the sturdiness and longevity of my designs, I will always give that loop at the top a hearty squish. And then it is ready to feed onto your bar assembly. Last of all, probably not quite enough wire to make a big fancy shape. So what we're going to do is cut probably three inches or so of that 18 gauge round wire. Get my cutters out of the way, hold on to the end and get that nice and warm. Honestly, if you're new to wire work, I cannot impress upon you strongly enough how important it is to warm the wire. If you warm it first, it'll be really, really easier to work with. And if you make a small error, it's much more likely to let you fix it rather than binning it and starting again. So again, it's around about three inches of that 18 gauge. I'm coming to the very end of the wire. What I want to do for this section is make a slightly smaller aperture. So I'm going as close as I can to the end of the wire. I'm going to rotate that around in a series of very small moves until I have got the first loop going, like so. Deb has kindly popped a link in for you. Thank you, Deb. And then I'm going to ensure that that is indeed in 2D. It's nice and flat. And you can either control the forming of the coil by just simply moving small movements, or you can push it into a finger or a thumb. So this is the other technique. I'm just pushing the coil into the thumb of my non-dominant hand in this direction, like so. 
making sure that I'm creating very small movements and in doing so you can have pliers whichever way you are comfortable in doing so what I'm doing is keeping the coil super flat so you can see it doesn't take that long to make a coil but if you take your time it's a super neat coil so when we've got around about three eighths of an inch left at the end I take that just a tiny bit further we're going to use the same technique that we did down at the base of this bead bar which is to turn that away so that it comes as if from the center of that coil in this direction so I just need to straighten that up slightly so that it's centralized looks a bit like a lollipop I think they're called suckers stateside which it took me a little while to understand when I heard that in film lollipop is what we call it here <laughs> which is a very very weird name so once you've got the bar the the, the last little bit sticking up from the center what I'm going to do is draw that ever so slightly forwards so it looks a bit more like a, a, a skittle or a frying pan now and then I'm going to turn that into an open and closable or simple loop so I'm going to make it a little bit larger so you can see what's happening draw that all the way around until it meets the angle like so catch the light on it hopefully we'll be able to see that and then give that a hearty squeeze you can reorganize the loops location if you need to I definitely want that to be closed up because I don't want it to slip off the bar and again open and closing to make that nice and solid so those are the types of the design that we decided to create for this one again I'm just going to scooch that out so you can see the whole thing let's just clear the board for a hot second so you can take as many or as few of the design ideas, you can play around with the bead order to your heart's content and every time you make it it'll look slightly different. So we've worked out how to do this one with the little dragonfly that is both mobile and magically just hanging around. We've looked at these, we've looked at these and we've looked at these. So the last bit is to just show you how to add the end of the bar assembly onto a piece of chain. Now you could add it to a section of beading thread with more of the beads there's plenty there if I show you what was left over from my first selection so from one pack of Swiss chard which is a mini mix in the Jesse James beads market fresh collection I made this design I added on a clasp and some chain reaction up at the top but I had all of these beads left including these little babies which are absolutely stunning so you could simply thread these onto your beading thread and add a clasp at the back, add beads from your stash, or you can create a bar assembly like I have here and add in some chain reaction. I'm afraid I don't know what number it is, but the colour just seemed to work really, really nicely with the aquatic tones of the Swiss chard. So whichever chain reaction you have available to you, which works, you could add that in. And a very simple toggle bar, which I've added on the side rather than at the back, because sometimes my shoulder just doesn't like to play. So if I pop that back up to the corner, can you still see that? Yeah, just about. So I won't do the whole thing, what I'm going to do is cut a short section of, again, 18 gauge round. Give that a bit of a trim. This is less than 12 inches, so it's about 9 or 10 inches off the wire. And we'll just turn a small loop at one end to represent just a holding position. So you'd thread all of the beads on in whatever order you fancied. So we'll do a half of this design, shall we? So for this, I was going to add in... One of whoops a daisy got excited and wanted to join in one of these huge faceted rondelles followed by another one of those gorgeous round in the green it's a beautiful green and then we would add in one of these now at this juncture you'll need to make sure that your dragonfly is whatever orientation you want you might prefer the slightly flatter and then I've got the textured one at the front so I'm going to ensure that my beads are hanging in the correct order, or my bead stacks rather, are hanging in the correct order for the dragon flies to line up. Now you could change around the bead order as you go, so I think for this one I might pop one of these really beautiful, it's almost like a jade, I don't know what the material is so don't quote me on that, but it's a beautiful colour. Feels lovely, nice and cold to the touch. So that can slide on down for this one. As long as you've got two of everything that you want to add on, then you can replicate the order, can't you? So for this one, 
we're just going to make sure that the cut side of that simple loop goes at the back. So let's add that one on. I think I'll add another one of those almost jade-like beads. Looks for all the world like a jadeite. It's very, very pretty. I don't know what it is, but it's a lovely, lovely colourway. And then I think we will finish off with... Why don't we do something interesting with these? So you don't always have to use bead caps like bead caps. You can put two of them back to back, and it makes a very interesting mobile bead, which you can play around with if you want to. And then we're going to add in the coil that we made. And then, would we have enough? No, we wouldn't. So let's put one of these square, almost jade colour beads on the end. And perhaps finish off with... I like designing on the fly, actually. It's really nice to design something ready for you to look at. I've just gone for a single bead cap at this end. Thank you very much, Becky. I appreciate that. Much appreciated. So imagining that you've done the same thing all the way over on the other side, what we're going to do is I have a piece of a stunt chain reaction just here. And what I tend to do is get ready with a clasp at one end. And what you'll find is with this clasp, it will fit on the 18 gauge no problem whatsoever. And then on the rosary linked section of your chain reaction, there's enough space in these loops for you to add into. So that's what we're going to do now, a very simple wrapped loop. So this is just about three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to twist everything round. Things are going to fly around and that's why I put the loop on the end so it doesn't all fly off into infinity. I'm going to create a loop to begin with. So bring that around. I've got half a loop or a semicircular shape to begin with. Take the tail over the end. And then we're just going to find a position on our chain. Drop that all the way through. Now you can see that that was easy because there's a gap. Squash that up by hand and that's the beauty of warming the wire first. You can get that to sit exactly how you want to. Support the circular shape and then draw that tail all the way around. Now again, you may prefer to use your pliers to do this. I'm going to do it left-handed now, that should be funny. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing this in the opposite way to the way I would normally do it. I would normally support with my non-dominant hand and do the work with my dominant hand, which is why it all looks a little bit amusing when I do it this way around. I've got to swap. I am simply not ambidextrous. So what you would do is to support the loop, making sure you don't squish that chain, and then tidy up the end of that coil so that it sits neatly against the core wire at the centre of your bead bar assembly. So if I drop my tools out of the way, we're going to slide everything along. So it's going to look a bit crazy for a second. As you know, we only did the half. What you can do with a bead assembly before you add the second load of beads on, the second side, which you would add to the other side of your chain or whatever you were going to use, we just put a tiny bit of shaping into this central wire. Now because we're working with crystals, potentially gemstones, you need to be a little bit gentle and don't push everything up to the very, very end. You don't want any pressure on it. You can have quite a gentle bend or you can have a deeper bend. It's entirely up to you. That is all the techniques that you will need to recreate. Let me just pop the sample piece into position and show you the rest of those beads that you've got left over. That's your Swiss chard mini mix. I will take a photograph of it and pop it into the comments later. Let's pop back up here for a second. So with a bead bar assembly you can use as much or as little chain as you like. If you add a clasp at the front uh, then it's just so easy to take on and put off. If you cut your chain reaction in half then you can obviously wear it slightly shorter or slightly longer. It's entirely up to you how you finish that off, but I really enjoyed working with Swiss Chard, which is a Jesse James Beads mini mix in the Market Fresh collection. Beautiful, beautiful colours. Really great value collection of beads. Lots of sparkly bits. You know, I do quite like a sparkle now and again. Deb says beautiful piece, Gem. Thank you so much. Margaret says stunning. Thank you, my lovely. I hope things are going as well as they possibly can be for you. So I hope to be back with you in seven days' time. It's my birthday on Friday next week, so um, I'm definitely going to have a gin. 
in the meantime, have yourselves an absolutely fantastic weekend. We're having a bit of a jubilee celebration weekend here in the UK. I hope that whatever it is you're getting up to, you have a wonderful, safe, happy time with family and friends doing whatever it is that you love. Happy creativity. Enjoy your market fresh Swiss chart. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I look forward to seeing you again next weekend. Big squeezy hugs and lots of love. Mwah. See you soon. Bye.